Another week in paradise. Welcome back. This time we've got a lot of slides, most of them having to do with the parks rather than um, the problems, so to speak, in the parks. We begin at the Transportation and Ticket Center where you see these lines that the trams always follow have been painted blue. Don't say we don't bring you any small news from time to time on this, tra on this podcast. The tram stops have gotten these new coverings in the last couple of weeks and on this last weekend there was a sign there that was a bit covered up. Who knows what they're about to get in that spot. They switched the construction walls for the tunnels on the way into the Magic Kingdom. The other side is now finished and no longer has a wall. Here's a shot from inside the Tiki Room where things are still working pretty well. I didn't get a shot of it, but there is one light out on one of the side macaws. Not really the biggest deal in the world. Things are still looking pretty good in the Tiki Room. Over to the Fantasyland construction. This in the foreground is one of the back walls of the castle, so to speak. You can see the Beast Castle in the background here. They've been doing some work on that front wall. It'll probably look a little bit like this back wall. The Beast Castle is over to the left. This is part of the Beast's Castle, one assumes, and you can see some of the great detail and different colorations going on with the brickwork there. It looks like it's going to be pretty marvelous, and I'm really looking forward to that part. Here's another view of the Beast's Castle. It doesn't really change too much week by week, uh, but the rock work continues to take on evolution and uh, get some coloration. And the same is true also over of Ariel's Undersea Adventure. Here we have a different crane in the Fantasyland area. There's the crane again. And you see a little bit more of the rock work taking shape in the back here. It really is a bit colored like, um, like Splash Mountain, really, with the browns and then the green only on some of the uh, ledges as they form. There's the entrance area, and I'm still amazed that it's just bare wood in the inside there. There's still a lot of work left to do on that attraction. Looking out over the Tomorrowland Speedway towards the Dumbo area, one of the wings for the Dumbo area, uh, and then this building in the background taking on some additional shape. Not too much change week by week there. Indeed, true to form, Journey into Narnia has closed as we thought it would. It was scheduled to do so. Um, Sounds Dangerous has stayed closed and Backlot Tour, as you'll see, is boarded up as well. This was new. Uh, we found this over in the uh, Fairfax Fair area, a kid power pack for the same price as a regular kid's meal. So what you get instead of uh, the sandwich and two goodies are all of these goodies. That's one, two, three, four, five goodies. I'm not counting the dressing. Five goodies plus the milk. If you had ordered, say, a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, you would get a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and two goodies and a milk, which means you're getting three goodies for the price of the peanut butter and jelly sandwich, which, I don't know, that's kind of perfect for my kids, actually, to do it this way rather than to buy the sandwich. And I can always buy the sandwiches elsewhere like at Target. While we were at Fairfax Fair, we took in a couple of the new hot dogs. They have gourmet hot dogs there. This one is called the Burrito, and indeed it has many burrito-like things, including sour cream and salsa and jalapenos in the wrap. And then this one is the pulled pork and coleslaw on top of a uh, hot dog. Uh, it's a big bun, but not a gigantic bun. I think they fixed the problem. They had a gigantic bun somewhat recently. And as you can see by the fork over here, these are not insignificant uh, portions. So it may be $8 for your hamburger, or, sorry, your hot dog, but it really fills the plate. And you know, this is that standard french fry thing underneath it, and it is just over full with hot dog and hot dog buns. So you're really getting a lot for your money in that case. Nothing new here, but uh, I had never until this weekend realized something I'm sure all of you know all these years, that the reason for these bees at the bottom of the Tower of Terror just before you exit is that when it opens up it turns into a 13. See, I'm not all that observant after all. It took me years to figure that out. Uh, the turkey legs are now sold at Fairfax Fair, right where those hot dogs are sold, and so the Tur Toluca Legs, a parody of Toluca Lake, a city in California near Hollywood, uh, sits empty in the meantime. Something else that's empty and what's missing here is Indiana Jones's face. I do believe this is his bullwhip, but uh, his face isn't there at the front of the Indiana Jones adventure. Fast pass, fast pass is long gone. Here are the bathrooms near Muppet Vision, kind of boarded up, and I did like the uh, inside jokes here that Fragile was itself broken and not to drop. This is on the side of the Toy Story Pizza Planet building. This building is also uh, sort of in the news right now because there's no characters. It used to be some of the Toy Story characters hanging out as oversized dolls from the top of this building. Only the Pizza Planet ship remains. 
Around the corner from there, sort of behind Muppet Vision, you encounter a very quiet section of the park. Um, but looks are a little bit deceiving because they're doing some things. As you can see here, they've got the uh, lights going up in part of the big city atmosphere. This is what it looks like without a flash. So it, it doesn't look horrible or anything, but the lights are going up and they're in place. And since, since things are getting so, um, so quiet in this corner of the park, they've decided to close both the shop and this restaurant at the back of the park. Now both of these were photos were taken with one hour left to go. And this is what the entire area used to feel like in Mickey's Avenue, which is now Pixar Place before Toy Story. So it looks like not all that much has changed, although that could be because Backlot Tour is presently not open, that there's just no humans back there. Nothing doing in this picture, I just thought I would show you something neat from inside Toy Story Mania. I reserve the right to show interesting rides as we do them, um, partly as a way of showing off how wonderful this time of year is. We were able to get on five rides in an hour and a half at Hollywood Studios, and these are the big ones, Tower of Terror, Rock and Roller, Great Movie Ride, and so on. All in just the last hour and a half of a Friday night. So until October begins and crowds pick up again, it can be nice. Not always and not every day. Sunday was more crowded, but, um, but it can happen. So there's Narnia as it looks now when it's closed. There's that great movie ride ride I mentioned a moment ago, and most of the things are working well in there, although here as we pull into the gangster scene, this car is not supposed to be out. It's supposed to drive in early and drive out early, but the car just doesn't move, so hopefully they'll get that fixed. And I still find myself wishing that this scene would, ever sh would show every so often. That's where the fire leaps out of the bank. Um, sure, it involves extra expense, but uh, that's what makes Disney Disney, that people come looking for the great big show. This is that second alien in the alien scene. There's a little bit of the strobe light on him that comes from the ride, not from me. Uh, and he's the one who's always standing up. He used to crouch and hide, but he's always visible now. So if you look in the right spot, you'll see him early. Switching parks over to Animal Kingdom. Um, advertisement here for the Lion King in 3D out in front of the park. That was good to see. And the, those topiaries are straight from uh, Epcot, where you see them in the Flower and Garden Festival. After many months, Primeval World has reopened this past weekend. On Saturday it reopened. It was open again on Sunday when I visited here. As you can see, the walls are still up on one side of Primeval World, but on the side that is open, which I guess is the left side, almost no weights. It was uh, cloudy when we visited in a rainy, but still there were no weights. And this side remains closed with no visible work being done on it. There was a new, um, uh, let's see, these are called... Um, Siamangs, that's what they're called on this island here. There was a new Siamang born about a week ago, clinging to the mother on the island at Dak. And just across the way at the Yak and Yeti outdoor seating, several months ago I showed you pictures of this structure, which now looks quite aged. I think they've done a good job of making that look great. And then around the corner from there, they've opened up yet another one of these structures. This is it from one angle, this is it from the other angle, um, and which has these, these nice gold embroidery and really bright shiny blue and green behind it and I think it's a great idea to bring more shade to the people they need it. And we've seen the Dyson Airblades for a long time in the bathrooms. This is the first time I've seen one with directions on how to do it. I guess a lot of people don't know how to do it with the Dyson Airblade. This view from the Pangani Forest shows that they've got the mist turned on quite heavily which, uh, which made me happy. And a little program note, I learned this past weekend that they're no longer called ODF or Outdoor Foods, they're now called ODV for Outdoor Vending, which is the name Disneyland has used all this time. Everest, looking good as always, this is kind of a wish you were here postcard. And then the other newborn, not really a newborn anymore, this gorilla is one year old, also from the Pangani Forest Exploration. Take you out to the roads real brief, and this is Osceola Parkway we are traveling on. The turn to the right would be the turn to go over the entrance archway of uh, Hollywood Studios. And along the road here, I'm not sure how easy it's going to be to see, are these orange signs, which are kind of, it goes all the way back and all the way forward. Kind of makes me think they're going to do some construction here and possibly build an off-ramp from Osceola directly onto um, the front entrance of uh, Hollywood Studios. At the moment, if you're where I am, I'm taking this picture, there's no way to get to Hollywood Studios except to go over the entrance and then up and around and go behind the park and then enter through the back entrance. As we've told you, they're going to be closing that back entrance in the coming months, so they obviously have to build an on-ramp first. And these, uh, these signs look like they're beginning to think about how to do that. 
Speaking of signs, one more weekend of showing you the bad signs. This one's peeling even worse than before. The good news is, though, and so is that one, that some of the ones around these appear to have been redone somewhat lately. And uh, one of my, uh, one of the people who, who speaks with me about this stuff has said that um, that there have been crews out working on these signs. So maybe there's been a hopeful turn for the better. This is from a popcorn cart in Fantasyland talking about some merch. It's a $12 popcorn filled uh, souvenir and I think that's pretty cute. Or you could buy the version of it which is not really for popcorn. This is in the stores directly um, and it's uh, you know not exactly the same thing but uh, this would be used for getting your own candy let's say. And then they have a souvenir mug in many of the parts now uh, for five dollars and it's a little out of focus but as you can see it's the characters and then something park specific, in this case Everest. And I'm a fan of that, you know, these, these mugs might be a little overpriced, but uh, it's a great souvenir. And then uh, there are these, I believe these are Vinylmation pins rather than Vinylmations directly. This is the Park 7 series, which somehow escaped my attention when it was there. So I thought I would uh, show you guys some examples of what Park 7 can bring you. Um, I like the uh, uh, rocket jets looking one at the top there, and my wife is a big fan of the uh, her magic tuba one. Something else we noticed while we were in the stores that the Burnbound guides are now park specific in some cases. This one is just uh, for Animal Kingdom and so they can charge a little bit less I guess but offer less in return. We're going to go out of Walt Disney World and head down the uh, 192 road, State Road, and then turn on the 27 or it could have gone the Interstate 4 to the 27 and we're heading towards Legoland and you'll see some billboards like this on your way to Legoland which is now on the green signs as well because you've got several miles to go I don't know the exact number but it's 20 or 30 miles from Disney World and some of the trip looks like this now as you can see there's not a lot going on here and so someone could be forgiven for thinking that they're not really heading in the right direction or where is this Legoland it is off the beaten path but hopefully that won't um, cause too many people to decide not to go to Legoland because I think they'd be missing something. As you see it opens on October 15th and they've got some of the rides that were left over from the previous incarnation including their uh, the wooden roller coaster, the Triple Hurricane, which you don't see in these shots but it is visible over these fences as well. That's the uh, sort of the new roller coaster that will also have kind of that dragon and knights theme to it. This will look weird someday, the parking lot looking pretty empty and not a lot of signage on it. We're making our way over to the entrance and the welcome sign because, drumroll, we are here to pick up our annual passes. And they've got these lines set up here and you can see how far back it goes. Lines were about two hours long at one point on the first day of distribution, that was Saturday. We were there on Sunday quite early in the morning and there was uh, no line whatsoever. You can also buy some merchandise. They have some opening day t-shirts. You can poke your head through the fence. This is inside the park proper. There's one shot for you of what to await, what awaits us, and that must be a worker there. Uh, and then another shot of what awaits. This is through the fence once again, and looking into um, what must be the main town, something they had kept from the original um, Cypress Gardens. And they have kind of a, this guy here who's a little bit of a sponsor mascot figure for Legoland. This is taken inside one of the bathrooms. They've always done those in Legoland, California, so I figured it was no different there. Here are the ticket booths. And then we have our little grandmother looking person that you could take a picture with on the park bench just outside. We won't see the empty parking lot for long, so I thought I would take a picture and savor it while I could. One last glimpse back inside the park. This comes a little bit out of order, but there it is. It's been some time since I've been at Restaurantosaurus, so the menu items here were new for me. I didn't know they had a vegetable sub, and I didn't know they had a shrimp po' boy. I have to give that one a shot the next time around. That does it for this time. Our videos are getting a little bit longer, but thank you for your patience, and we appreciate it. Let us know what you think of the new format. As you can tell, we've put a little effort into the, um, into the music side of things, and we hope we're meeting a need for you guys out there in Internet world. Thanks. Talk to you soon.